Hi guys, it's Andy, the GD Script Dude, with an update on my latest digital logic project progress. Here we are in the logic scene, and uh, we are implementing the boss level, the URISC, which is uh, RISC, usually means a reduced instruction set computer. It's like like within one clock cycle it implements like like a lot of functionality such as reading from memory, doing some arithmetic and writing it back to memory all within one clock cycle. That is what risk architecture does. Reduced instruction set computer. And the instructions are very minimal. And then this one, the U, the prefix of the U means the ultimate version. And you can see here it's it's not well considering this is a computer, um like in what do you call it? Like a well computer chip basically. We got a decade counter, this produces our outputs for the phases of the micro instructions that are done in a computer for every like operand that is executed like you know when you go add a to b it, there's various sequences of operations that need to be done like like uh, fetch something from memory like uh, fetch a fetch b add them together and put them back into memory that is what this kind of micro instruction sequencer is doing and here we in the urisc we only have the one it's called a sequel it's uh, like a one instruction per three bytes it is like a <laughs> There's no operand. Basically, every instruction is occupying three bytes, and the first byte is like the A value, and the second byte is the B value, and the third byte is the C value, and the C value is a jump to another location in the memory. A little bit useless explanation but I got the idea from this paper called looking paper and it is uh what's this called for papers and it is called a urisk and then there's a description about it and it was when was it published in uh let's see in 1988 so it, it, it describes the this idea for the URISC, the ultimate reduced instruction set computer, and it tells you about how these three, these three uh, like uh, words per instruction work. So to execute a URISC instruction, the CPU subtracts the first operand, this one, from the second one. And it saves it into the memory address of this second operand. And then if the result was negative, it then jumps to the jump address. Uh, we're in the third address. If it, if the subtraction result was negative. Yeah, there. That's what they say. So it takes that A. So imagine the, the PC, the program counter is pointing to this address it has to grab this address then it moves to the next address and grabs that one then it subtracts this one from that one and then saves the result back into that one then it takes note of the result was it negative or not if it was negative then it's going to jump to the next address specified in the next address in memory does that make sense probably not but anyway it is all explained here and then they give an example live actually is that program I implemented to do testing of it 
I think he was. Sample programmer for a fragment for us. One thing I didn't do, they said, well, somewhere out there they say, they make an assumption that the, the program kind of starts from the address of one. And I'd, I've actually spent ages, days working on this to make it work. And it's not, it's not practical to make the program can to start from address one in simple architecture so I don't do what they do here they say in the first memory location you should have a word that is zero and then the program counter starts from address one and then starts executing code then if ever you return to the the address one uh, address zero it stops working it doesn't do anything it just keeps looping around there. That actually is insanely difficult to implement in hardware. I couldn't do it. I gave up. So my code starts from address zero and it has this code from address zero. And this code actually just moves with something one place to another. So maybe I'm rambling on a bit too much, but anyway, if you were to read all of this, you will come across this architecture, which I've implemented exactly, except they simplify things. It's not so simple as this, because they say somewhere in here that they are all of these registers. These are registers, PC, the program counter, the R register, the memory data register and the memory address register they're all like based on jk master slave flip-flops which is fine but you have to take in, into account timing which affects the control logic and the adder is pretty simple there's two buses there's uh, this bus there and there's another bus there there's two buses and in my hey, flip to this there's the one bus, there's the other bus. Uh, let's see, there's, here's my program counter. I base these all off the same devices, same model of a register. We've got a program counter, we've got an R register, we've got a memory address register, and we have a memory data register. So there's a lot of issues here with timing, so you can't just most of these are simple clock in and you got a input enable pin open enable and a data input bus coming from the bus which is such as that bus data input and the mo mi these are the master slave features in the register right so you've got master in and master out so what am I talking about? I'm talking about there's a master flip-flop and it propagates to a slave output flip-flop. And there's a possibility to go possibility to go directly into mastering and you can access the output from the master whatever value it has. And the current value of the data input bus is there, that blue stuff. That blue blue digit there and the output master output is what's stored on our master input of this register and the output is there and then this is just showing what is currently on the data bus that this register is connected to here and then we have our adder Oh, we have our various logic gates, and then we have a decade counter for our like micro instruction sequencer. Wow, this is pretty tough stuff, isn't it? Well, that, that's our architecture which we've implemented, and then the next tricky thing is understanding the sequences of the micro ins instructions you got to get your head around what what is a micro instruction what is a micro program i think this is a micro program 
it is basically what what is this thing sequencing through it is going through a microprogram so each um assembly language piece of code is is implemented by the microprogram which is basically sequencing the uh, logic levels on all of these devices there to implement it so uh, 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 where are we? What are we doing? I'm going there. Go back to that one. So this is the microprogram, and these these uh, things there, these uh, designations, PC out, Z in, Mar in, and so forth. They're like they're designated on this diagram. So, like for example, PC in means there's a signal saying put whatever is on that bus into the input of the PC register, the program counter register. Going to my circuit here, you can see that that is the PC. So what that would mean is the input, enable input is made high, and then there's a rising pulse on clock. That will clock it in, because this is a master-slave flip-flop on the when this clock is high and input is high, it stores the input value from the input bus to the the uh, master flip flop, and then you can see the value reflected on that value there. And then when this clock goes down on the negative edge, it clocks it through, it copies the master value to the output value there. Then it, to get it on the output bus we need to have a high value on the output enable pin. So that is what that is all about. So you can see it is kind of tricky, man. And then, so we got our flow of these micro instructions with <laughs> these micro, yeah, micro program. We go through the micro program and micro instructions and these output uh, the um, control signals to the circuit. So we go through all of those and then bearing in mind there is a high and low value for the clock. And that's shifting values in from the input to the output so from the master slate, the master input of the register to the output which is the slave output this allows us to do pretty complex things look um let's pick on one like that line three the, the third one that means pc out is outputting from the the pc register and it's because it's connected to the adder that value goes to the, to the other input and C in means there's one added to it and the output of the other goes to the bus which connects to the program counter register input and then it's obviously one plus the, out, the current output and also it goes to the memory address register input and then that that reads from the memory that it is addressing and that value is going to go into the input of the the uh, the memory data register all in one line <laughs> it's, it's insane that's the way it took me so long to figure this out like pc there wow uh, i'll give up i can't explain it here it's very very tricky so this is why it's like very efficient it basically does all that stuff. Here's another one. That's another amazingly complicated one to understand. So that, 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 that means it's got the output of the memory data, what was read from the memory, an address. And then the comp means it's going to, what was stored previously in the R register, is complemented in, in inverted bits and then C in add one to make it like a, a subtraction and then ending means remember if it's negative or not 
and then yeah in the yarn okay it goes to the and the, yeah it also in saves the value to the yeah the, it saves the value of that calculation to the memory data register and then writes it to the memory of the current location addressed by the memory address register <laughs> anyway you get the idea it's pretty tough to understand this so this will be the boss level of my game eventually and then the hardwired this is talking about a way to connect it all up with logic this, I, I did mostly this but like I said there's a, there's a clock high and low level to consider and the, the propagation between the input and the output of the master-slave effect of the, the registers to take into account so I had to add some more logic connected to the clock levels to make it work so that's probably enough for now I've actually got this working to my satisfaction like this is in the reset state here I can see there are phase zero and oh, I can click this it goes low and then phase one come on what's going on oh resets high okay another way to reset everything is to upload the circuit again so we're back there clock it and that shifts us to stage to phase one and then go down low clock it again stage phase two Phase three. I think that's enough for now for this video. Yeah, you can see it's pretty complicated. I've actually run my program. Do you want to see the program? Can I find the program? It is in the, the memory. I, I just put it hardwired into the memory. Later, I will. I will like code uh, the way to program it with an assembler where's the memory come on come on memory there you go see i'll put the var in the ready function i've got the program list of these numbers and then i put them into the the memory i program them in in the ready function when the memory chip is loaded so i think that's <laughs> that should be enough for now yeah you get the idea it's pretty tough to do this but it's kind of working working pretty well okay see you in the next video over now like and subscribe <laughs>